helps to capture the progress of, of people. There's a lot of things that we can learn from the past and those moments were captured through painting or through film, things like that. Mars has been a planet of interest since the ancient Egyptians, since the ancient Babylonians and, and Chaldeans. It became increasingly of interest in the uh, beginning of the 16th century when they could actually look at it with telescopes. In the 20th century, they could really take photographs of it with telescopes. And then as soon as they started going uh, with spacecraft to Mars in 1965, if I remember correctly, then uh, tons and tons of images started coming out. I believe really strongly in educational outreach and it's my way to give back. I'm doing exploration, let's try to give back to the community and the taxpayers by showing the wonderful things that we're, we're discovering. There's an image down the wall here which has the iron oxide surface, but you see this white powder in there, and that white powder was discovered by accident. The, the rover called Spirit, its front uh, right wheel was dead, so we were dragging it, driving backwards. We didn't even see this pile of white powder. It filled up our wheel, and as we drove by, it acted like a salt shaker and made this white line on the surface. And the next time we stop to look around, we go, what the heck is that? We follow back to the source and we find that was ultra pure silica. And the only way you make this, this micron size silica powder is we think it was a fumarole. It may have been the last place on Mars that was wet before all the water boiled off. One of the things we really love about Art Night is the audience just explodes, it goes way up. And um, so it's a great opportunity for us to give artists uh, more exposure and to hopefully give audiences something unexpected, large scale sculpture, installation, uh, kinetic work, uh, work with light. So that's what we're doing right now with uh, work by David uh, Jang. is we take classic plays, and my husband, Lance Davis, the all-talented man, adapts them and makes them smaller, shorter. So they're usually not more than 80 minutes long, and we have an intermission in a kind of intimate setting where people can get a glass of wine, have a cookie, talk to each other, get to know each other. And the way that we do the classics is we kind of heighten the comedy. We do somewhat broad strokes so that people get the gist of the play. Tonight, we wanted to do something that people could come in for a short period of time. So we have done a thing called radio theater series where we take old radio scripts and we present them and we make them come alive with the skill of our actors and they're kind of live and people get to use their imagination. And for those who knew those radio scripts, it's kind of fun because they, you know, they're familiar. Um, and for those who don't, it's a real introduction to that kind of world. I mean, it's great to see all these people come in and, you know, from all different places and who haven't been to us before. And it's nice to see them kind of delighting in, in being together and seeing stuff and going on to see other things in the city. Night brings hundreds of people to our museum who perhaps haven't seen us before and get to know us and we get to show off our great art. In the main gallery we have Effie Charlton Fortune which is our early California art from the 1920s and in our cosmic Krylon garage we have an incredibly creative CalArts artists and students and faculty and so they're doing uh, car plays and it's a combination of performances around cars and plays inside of cars and we're really excited about this exhibition because uh, Hollywood in Havana is actually Cuban art so we get to expand the notion of what is California art in this museum. You can love it on so many different levels on the Cuban level, on the movie poster level, on the graphics level. It's visually just really really beautiful. 